and what's present for me on this trajectory Tuesday is the ability to meet less with the team and move forward. So on trajectory Tuesday, I ask you in the chat to drop what is the one, what is the most important thing you could accomplish today? That's a question I've been asking myself daily for the past almost three weeks. What is the most important thing you can accomplish today? And as Sean unmutes, and team, if we can support Sean in unmuting, today we're gonna to be sharing some distinctions where we have two beautiful guests that we'd like to introduce towards the latter end of today's call. And Sean, Mr. Kennedy, right there. Oh, you got it, Mona, thank you. So yes, we're gonna be talking about different distinctions within the formula, uh, some things that are present for us as we begin to accelerate. Um, a big congratulations to Nita, Teresa, um, and I know I'm forgetting one more for joining um, our one-on-one -on -one program yesterday. That is definitely a huge win. Um, and Jacqueline Franchetti, there we go. So thank you to Jacqueline. Thank you to Nita. And thank you to Teresa Pfefferly um, for their true commitment and being one of our first 25 vertical ecosystem partners. There is much happening there. And I'm excited for more importantly, instead of us talking, having them come on here and begin to share all their wins. Um, so that is present. The movement is growing. Um, we are in massive focus. And on top of this beautiful beach house, which I have the pleasure of being down here at Pop and Nani's house, um, which is full of personality, we have Sean Callagy with his police officer glasses and a beautiful skyline in the back. What's up, Sean? Yes, and I'm going to shift my skyline just slightly so we get uh, the bay in the background. And um, it is Trajectory Tuesday. I'm present to gratitude. And just thankful. And if everybody's like, present too? What are these words? Dude, I'm just happy. I'm thankful. Like, yeah, thank you. And so here's what I'm, um, we're going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, Fernando, thank you for getting us going. Um, and please understand um, my growing desire to figure out um, my magical and beautiful relationship with time. And, uh, you know, I've been going for hours today this morning. And I love people. So I, you know, huddles run run long at times, coaching sessions run long, you know, relationship discussions run long out of a desire and love for people. Um, I just want to give and give and give. And, and that's just what it is. And that's what we're here to do together. Um, but we're also here to figure out like when, you know, like what boundaries are, loving people and conditioning boundaries. So that continues to be an area of exploration for me. So thank you for your patience uh, in the mornings when I get on a couple minutes after the start. So thank you for your leadership. And with everybody, um, let's go here. Um, none of this matters unless it's fun. So, so there's four energies and we're gonna make sure it's fun and magical. And so the building, good morning, Mona. It's fun that you're up here. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Are you having fun, Mona? My, yeah. my sense of your, your energy is that you're not having fun. <laughs> Are you having a lot I of fun? I calls this morning. Excellent. Going on strong. Were they fun? Yes, very fun. My friend's okay. coming over soon. Okay. Do you think that's true, Fernando? I'm sensing a lack. Of, put in the chat if you think Mona's actually having fun. My level five yeah. listener said there was like, there's a fun gap there. No. But all, all kidding aside, like we're going to be in different spaces. So Mona might be in a Zeusy space to get things done right now, right? A contemplative space. But underneath it all, our ability to access and have fun drives are um, doing good, adding more massive value, and having more and more what? More money, time, and magic. So the space of Unblinded and Deepak uh, said something to me about a week ago. And I think he was right because, you know, obviously there was been a lot going on, you know. And he said that, you know, hey, things are feeling like a little bit of like push energy, a little less than pull, pull energy. And I really appreciate and thank Deepak for sharing that. And it's easy for us to like, you know, lose a little bit of like sight, like where we're on the continuum. And so let's start with this. This has to be fun. Like it has to be fun. And if it's not fun and magical, even while we go through the challenging parts and we can't laugh and we can't, you know, engage in Ogmandy, you know, scroll seven as I lovingly laugh at myself in the world. And not like manufactured, but just it's like fun and magical. And that part of our, our work here at Unblinded is to shift and change the association that we have. I'll try to do this without my glasses for a minute. It just hurts my eyes, but I want you to see my eyes for a sec. It hurts a, a good amount. Uh, red night is pigmentosa. We have uh, extra hypersensitivity to sunlight. And so um, 
it's just really having like finding to enjoy what it is that you're doing not just enjoy it like to laugh and to and to engage in the like i'm ridiculous like what ways are you ridiculous in like and let's go with that in the chat like what ways can you laugh at yourself like what way can you laugh at yourself like i think it's ridiculous that my desire is to make everybody swim out to the sandbar insane so ridiculous i've connected in my mind and my heart that like people facing their fears and doing it anyway is like really valuable and important. And I, I find it odd how much fun and how much I love the ocean. And that, you know, yesterday, Fernando, I said, you know what, dude, it's a little bit crazy. You know, it's a little bit high tide. So let's not swim out to the sandbar. And five minutes later, where were we, Fernando? <laughs> we were standing on the sandbar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who was standing on the sandbar? Adam, yourself, and I. Yeah. Now, I, I just want to like explore this, right? And, I, and, and we're always like just radical heart open transparency. When I said swim out to the sandbar, what did you think and feel truly? We had a very limited window. We're all working, right? Getting stuff done. What did you think when I said, hey, let's swim out to the sandbar? Honestly. So, honestly, gut was, I know it's getting close to real raw time. Um, Sean said that someone spotted three sharks last week. Sean giggles about the fact that there's like, he swam past a shark like a couple days ago and maybe like doing this in a rush on high tide when he just mentioned that maybe we shouldn't, it's probably not the best idea. And if everyone does it, I'm going to do it anyway. All right. All right. And so that's, that's what you were going in. So I heard a little bit of trepidation, fear, preference not to. Yes. Correct. Okay. So and here's like my route, like, so keep putting the chat, please. Like, what, what do you kind of laugh at yourself about? And so I had this like incredible pull towards like supporting people in breaking through like fear barrier in like ways like that. So, and cause I have a hallucination or I have a, I have a theory about it, hallucination about it. So when you got out there on the sandbar, physically on it, like not where it was still over our head, but you're on it. And it was still like chest deep. It wasn't like shallow sandbar. But let's say we were 50, 60 yards out in the ocean. Maybe more, maybe, you know, 50 to 70, let's go with. Um, what did you feel when you were standing on the sandbar? Just immediate answer. What did you feel? Sense of relief. Okay. Anything else? You felt relief? What else did you feel? I felt um, a slowing of time. I felt a gratitude for Adam because I was not in my fun energy and he had like a really big desire to like go in the ocean and like his desire trumped my like, I guess, desire to like just not have fun. And I was like, let's do it. And I was just so grateful I did. It switched my whole mood. It changed the trajectory of what the rest of my day was. Okay, um, that's, so was that, I that's a space I want to play in. So how did it change your mood from what to what? It went from like, like what I would call like a, a deep tunnel vision of maybe not um, optimal question asking to like, I, I, I would say a scotoma. It was like a blank space of what the hell am I even worried about? Like, what, what is actually happening? And then it just gave me the opportunity to re reframe where I was, um, reframe what I wanted to do with my day, reframe, you know, how I was feeling in the moment, reframe what was possible. Um, and I've been, you know, really, really anchored on that. Um, I shared a story last week, but I'll kick it back to you. Okay. And so, and what did you feel like when you got back on the sand? Just what were the feelings? So you got back on the sand, you went to the sandbar, got back on the sand, out of the ocean. What did you feel? I want to go back. All right. I wanted, what, to, I wanted to, go ahead. What did you feel? You want to go back? What did you feel? Like, what were the feelings, the actual emotions and feelings? Just close your eyes. What were the feelings you felt? Felt love. I felt happiness. I felt, you know, I, the feelings of giddy, just like, you know, wanting to giggle. I felt connected. I felt seen. I felt um, like that time was valued. I felt like memories were created. And those were like the overarching. All right. So that supports my theory. And thank you. And I, I didn't know the answer. When we face and do things that are uncomfortable and we have fun about it, 
And let's be real. Was I, was I fun in my energy about it? Like in like cajoling, influencing, like making that happen. Was there fun energy present in where my sort of Willy wonka was that somewhat present? Yeah, I remember, oh, are the waves breaking and bigger over there? Yeah, okay, let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Right. right. So, which footnote, by the way, is part of the science because that means the sandbar is actually higher there, meaning it's shallower, right? So I knew we'd be able to stand. If you saw the waves breaking, I knew we could stand because what I didn't want to do was take you and Adam out there and then all of a sudden be in like eight feet of water, you know, or instead of like five feet of water because that would have been uncomfortable for every, I think everybody being like 70 yards out in the ocean now having to make a U-turn because there's no bottom. That probably would have created some more fear. But here's what I'll tell you though. When you got back on the sand, you would have loved having done it. Of so course. so here's the point to everything for today. And make it very simple. Your trajectory shifts when you start having and when we get out of our head, right, and into our heart, but that means something more like how do you do that? It's by doing physical things with your body, enjoying yourself, facing your fear, making phone calls that you're afraid to connecting with people, enjoying and loving. And that's what we're here to ground in too. So I am present to the reality that my responsibility here leading this charge is to bring the four energies of fun, aspirational goddess Zeus, invariance, and I may not bring it exactly the way you'd like me to each day. And one of the things that I, I always center on when I think about the people I love, you know, people like Tony Robbins, people like Bruce Springsteen, and there's like a level of fandom that could be created. And I don't want to create fandom. I don't want to create fandom. I want to create like coachdom, right? Fandom equals getting, I want, this is the distinction of distinctions. I want to post this today and put it everywhere, right? I want to coach you, not be somebody that you're a fan of. I want to train you. I want to lead you. I want to support you. Right? I don't want you to be a fan of my work. I am not a fan of Tony Robbins. I've done videos. I'm not a fan of Tony Robbins' work. I'm not a fan. I don't want his friggin' autograph. I want to learn. I want to be inspired. I want to implement. I want to accelerate. And I want to credit him for his impacts in that space. That's who I want to be in your world. I want to be somebody that's teaching you, sharing, causing, causing things, and implementation. Because when we're in fandom, and this is what I say about Bruce Springsteen, causes things in my life this music causes an acceleration it causes action it causes inspiration it causes the mood shifts Fernando said i gave to him yesterday it causes when i hear the rising when i hear this hard land it causes things right it causes things and so when we're in fandom though what i see for people who are fans of bruce that say they love bruce they critique his concerts they critique his interviews. They critique everything. I'm not seeking critics. I'm seeking people that may like, have an innovative thought. Cool. But I'm not really not even seeking that that much. What I'm seeking is like, hey, this is where I am. After 23 years to coach, I guarantee you, you will benefit infinitely more by letting me coach you and I'm blind to train you than by having you critique. Like, you know, I like the huddle more when it's 26 minutes not 31, but not 15. Like, I get it, but there's all kinds of different people who have those thoughts. Love you. And like, I'll watch people do set list analysis of Bruce, and they'll analyze, like, I would have put Born to Run as the 20th song, not the 23rd song, and I prefer it better when Bruce, like, is in the center. Like, it's like, dude, I get it. Are you feeling the music then? Are you present? Like, Fernando, thank you for being present and swimming out to the sea. Thank you for that. Yes. Right? So, like, I love you. What's in the chat? Like, let's go there. What are you laughing yourself about? Like, I'm laughing at myself that I have people do crazy things. And I promise the crazy things that people do work. Just like Lil. Right? Like, he yes. figured out who to work with, what it was, what was happening, right? And in alignment with everything, everybody. By doing crazy things. So what, what's in the chat there? And there's a lot of feedback, brother. I know what's happening. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm taking a walk here to the bay. So as soon as I pass this house and all this construction, but what I will share. 
There's some funny stories going on in the chat that Deepak has shared. What's present for me is that when you talk about like wishing you would have done things differently, I wish you would have taught me the difference between fandom and coachdom before I very embarrassingly took a selfie next to Tony Robbins in front of 40,000 people. So as my coach, Sean, uh, you let me down on that one. Um, but all kidding aside, we do have two amazing people um, we'd like to introduce here. So is there anything you'd like to share before I do, Sean? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Please, let's introduce the amazing uh, people. Awesome. So I'm going to introduce first an unblinded team. If you can please support in getting Rushia Brown and Natalie Krizan. Hope I said those correctly. And let's read. Um, there, these are some points, but I, I really want to just quickly read her bio. Rushia Brown is a former pro basketball player, WNBA executive with LA Sparks, change agent and motivational speaker. Rushia has made the world her home as a professional basketball player. She competed at the highest level for 17 seasons, 10 internationally in five countries, which includes Spain, France, Greece, Korea, and Italy, and seven in the WNBA, six with Cleveland Rockets and one with the Charlotte Sting. Beyond the game, Rushia has been an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and now an executive for the very league she played in. Through all things, she has embraced her role as a change agent and seeks to inspire those looking to take their lives to the next level. Rashia is a graduate of Foreman University, where she received her BA in sociology and has her number 34 hanging from the rafters, never to be worn again. She also earned her MBA from George Washington University, Rashia Brown. Rashia, how are you this morning? I'm great, and it's Rusha, but I'm great this morning. Thank you Thank guys you, so Rusha. much for having me on. So I'm sorry, Rusha. No, so, no problem. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And um, quick question, like, what are you doing here? Thank you, this is amazing. Like, like, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mastery of life and business and basketball. Um, and, you know, what's exciting for you and up, up, you're up to in the world and what would you like to share? I am very excited. I actually had a friend, Crystal Robinson and a former competitor in the league invite me into the ecosystem and it's just funny because I've always been a mentor I've been someone who's poured into others and she's provided me an opportunity to now receive mentorship to sponsorship you know have people to help me in facilitating my dreams and I'm really excited about learning more about the organization and how I can greatly impact the lives of others through these relationships. Oh, amazing Rusha and can I ask this what, what was it like for you going from the transition of, and, and let me just drop in, um, you know, and I certainly didn't play at your level, um, but I was a division one player. I was captain of my team at Columbia University. So at, at least up to that point, I understand what's at stake and being coached and the sacrifices and all those dynamics. Uh, and for me, there was a lot of confusion about transitioning from the world of athletics. I had hoped to go on to play professionally. I have a, a I'm legally blind. I have hereditary eye disease and started affecting me just enough my senior year to stop, you know, my potential of going further or my at least getting drafted and playing minor league baseball for sure. So, but the transition was hard for me. How was the transition for you in going from, I mean, ridiculously elite athlete, um, you know, one of the micro percentage of the planet um, to the world of business and being an executive? Ironically enough, it was extremely difficult because as a professional athlete that reaches a certain level, your life and everything about it completely resolves around, revolves around being in that space. And so when you are removed from that space or remove yourself, now you're trying to figure out who you are and what you are without the ball in the game and trying to establish a new identity. And even when you think you have figured it out, the people around you still have you in that box. Mm. It was very hard. That's why I ended up going back to school. That's why I stayed away from coaching. That's why I didn't do certain things because I didn't want to be seen as just Rusha, the basketball player, but to be able to develop my other strengths, my other gifts and impact the world. But depression was a part of it. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. I didn't have the resources and people looked at me a certain way. So I allowed myself to be pressed down by the views of others. Amazing. And, and so we talk a lot here, Rusha, about our identity and how, um, how deeply, and, and that's what you're communicating about, how deeply rooted your identity um, is or was. And you have 
uh, obviously a ton to offer, or you had you had a ton to offer before people understood it. And so one of the one of the the areas of mastery that we work on here is how do you like rapidly get people to see you through an accurate, not their inaccurate distorted prism. Um, so and, and not all that obviously. Well, uh, obviously um, I'm presuming I can't say that you're an African American. Um, woman, I am. Correct, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so so that has all obviously all that I plays an even bigger part, mm -hmm. yeah. especially in the conversion into the world of business. So, you know, if you wouldn't mind sharing, how have you dealt with um, what's been present there and how you're feeling about it and what are you doing about it? You know, the thing that I found is that people minimize athletes and then as a black woman, because they see athletes from the neck down. Yeah. Physical and not mental. But there are so many things. I, I lived in Europe for 10 years. I spoke three different languages. I had exposure to everything and had been a part of some pretty amazing things but the relationships and the people that I knew were very limiting. And then as in they wanted me to be just Rusha, the basketball player. And I think I was challenged, but because I'm such a competitor, those were the things that drove me to make people see me another way. I went to George Washington to get my executive MBA. I made sure that I was in the rooms where, you know, traditionally black women were not allowed. I wasn't afraid to go first. And it just gave me the strength and the um, courage to open doors for other people. And I've always been fueled by providing opportunity for others and not allowing myself to be afraid, like you spoke about, being afraid and doing it anyway. I've always embraced that, that mindset. And even here today, like every day is a different journey and I'm excited about it. I'm challenged about what comes next. Yeah, so thank you. And, and Rusha, like we mean it here, so uh, I'm grateful about building money, time, and magic. And that's been the study of my life. And, um, you know, I, I'm an attorney, I don't know if you know that. Um, and, but I was an entrepreneur first because I didn't even want to be an attorney. And I didn't have anybody in my family directly on the line. I wasn't raised with money that, um, you know, could, could give me support, guidance, and mentorship in that space. And I had to go outside of the traditional educational systems. Yes, I went to Columbia, yes, it was an Ivy League school. You went to GW, your executive MBA, incredible school. Um, but I think even through those processes, there's so much that we don't learn and mm -hmm. you know, have to like, similarly, like, I don't think that there's anybody who could teach anybody to be a professional basketball player that without some insight from people who play professional basketball, but then also Absolutely. you got to court and you got to play professional basketball mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. because you got to, you got to get, you know, your game speed to a whole different place. And so what we work on here is helping people, those micro distinctions, which is an athlete, I'm, you know, you're incredibly present to, um, as somebody who now works as a business executive, you're incredibly present to, that it, it's in those split second micro decisions about what we say, what we don't say, where we're spending our time, who we're aligning with, and all those, you know, or how we translate into the measurables. And what we measure here really is, is contribution, you know, like literal contribution amounts, you know, to people, charitable causes they care about, disposable income numbers, we'll talk about that, sales people are making, and sales can include recruiting the right people to be on your team, your partners, whatever it is that you're seeking. Uh, and those come really, as you go all the way back to speaking engagements we're creating, and those could be just lunch meetings, all the way to like speaking in front of 10,000 or 100,000 people, TV appearances, and all the way to ecosystem merging. So I'm honored and excited about, you know, your being here, um, you know, and we got to deliver, you know, for folks like yourself. Otherwise, why would you be here? So I'm honored that you even took a few minutes to check out what we're doing. Um, and with great certainty, I share with you that if your desire is in the space to grow and actually what I don't even ask, what do, what do you desire, Grisha, in the world? Like, where do you see your future going that you want more of? Because obviously anybody who's here wants more. So what is it that you're seeking more of? You know, I'm seeking more opportunities to impact lives. I um, committed myself after retiring from the game of basketball to make sure that I really did the things that I loved. And I love empowering others. I love being a facilitator of dreams. I love helping people get to whatever is next for them. And I briefly would step into the space. I would speak, I would get on stages and I loved it. But more than being on stage, I love the interaction with the people. So I did workshops, I did you know, um, opportunities for youth to grow and develop. So those are the spaces that I, I really want to be in. I definitely believe in doing well, but doing good. 
So I want to make sure that I'm learning to monetize my gift because I do everything <laughs> a lot of times for free, but it still is a business for me. I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my family, but I love being in front of people that want something that I can share my vulnerability with and all my ups and downs and, and, and giving them all of me and just an opportunity to grow. Well, if I could, if I could share this, so give like real meaningful value. A um, couple quick things, and then we'll, we'll get to our other wonderful guests. And forgive me for going a little bit long this morning in my chit chat. Um, you know, we, we keep a little bit of a free flowing morning here. Mm -hmm. So, um, Rusha, the number one, um, you know, yes, you do have three dynamics that are challenging, right? Uh, for you, limiting uh, in terms of initial perception, right? You're an athlete, right? And mm -hmm. these are the negative side, uh, right? You're a woman and you're an African American woman. Those are three statistical inhibitors. Here's the flip side. On the flip side of those otherwise statistical inhibitors, um, you're being an athlete that's open listening. So the fact that like you're like my, my your jersey hangs in the rafters equals listen, right? So you will be able to, which I'm sure you know already, effectively get into any space. You can get in the space of lawyers. You can get in the space of doctors. You can get in the space of nuclear physicists like that, right? You start adding. Uh, the fact that we are right now because of the dynamics that have occurred, I think there is an unbelievably unique time frame for women and particularly African-American women and men in a very unique window right now that there's like a scotoma has been created. There's an openness to listening and there's a desire that's higher than, than normal, right, to create space. And so there's a very privileged window that's open that I hope doesn't close, but may, if we're just talking strictly marketing opportunity, time. Like marketing is just messaging, right? And being uh -huh. heard, right? There's a very unique time frame. And what I would back that up with is your executive status, your MBA, and, and supporting people and getting what they want. Because people certainly want motivation and inspiration. But what people really want is what you just said, is they want to create monetization at a higher level. People who have the monetization want to create scaling and time freedom. And people have time, freedom, and scale, and they want to create legacy and magic. And being able to support people and creating those outcomes from a place of absolute certainty equals monetization for Rusha. And I am super clear on that. So the space of like learning, and that's like me basically just telling you how to like run the triangle offense in like nine mm -hmm. seconds. Right? <laughs> so right, like there's like, then there's the actualization of it where you're running at a speed. That's what it looks like. And, you know, by, by being present here and the opportunities we have here, that is what, what I do for a living and have done for a really long time. And so I'm honored. Um, please be critical of, listen to me with a critical ear, a doubtful ear, challenge what I'm thinking, right? And I, I invite that. And let me prove to you that the, the desires that you're seeking for monetization acceleration are present here. Um, but just at least listen with half an open ear and equally like not short ear and like it's going to show up. And I thank you, Rusha, for everything that you represent in the world and that you're up to and for the opportunity to prove who you are to you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Incredible. Thank you, Rusha. And uh, a big thank you to Crystal Robinson and Courtney Epps as well. This is thank another Crystal example. Robinson, Courtney Epps for yes. short. And now we have another beautiful guest. Um, we are running a tad over, all good. This is what happened here when, when we're surrounding emerging ecosystems. We have Natalie Prezan. Um, I unfortunately don't have a, an extended bio. I know Sean, you met her yesterday in a real raw open with Gina Ricci. What I do know is that she's a fitness professional trainer and health coach for women. And um, she is currently living in Croatia. So Natalie, hello and welcome to the Unblinded Puddle. Um, Natalie, what's up? How are you, Natalie? Hi, Sean. Yeah, hi, everybody. It's uh, great to be here. Like, I was even, even like suddenly in this call, and I'm happy to see you again, Sean. Yesterday was a really interesting evening. <laughs> I'm doing I, great. Yes. So what Natalie represents, what Natalie represents in the world is the, <laughs> the there are no excuses for not failing to show up for your real raw or real raw open. <laughs> because Natalie... Literally, and this would have a little fun energy with this, but being very practical, <laughs> Natalie literally went through an aftershock, I think twice, uh, from an earthquake that occurred in impacted Croatia, 
Um, and Natalie stayed on through the Real Raw Open and even was presenting like right after an aftershock. So Natalie acknowledges you for being like the model of absolute perseverance <laughs> and in Japanese yeah. language, uh, resiliency as you were there in an aftershock on your Real Raw Open. Natalie, am I exaggerating? What happened? Yeah, it was literally like that, you know, it was right before I was, it was my, 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 uh, my turn and I had to, like, I was preparing the, the speech in my head, you know, and uh, right, like, two, three minutes before I started to talk to Gina as my client, my potential client, I felt the, I felt the aftershock, you know, which is not normal, but it's normal in last two months, it's happening so often. And uh, I didn't feel it for uh, like two weeks now. And then it happened last night. And then, you know, I tried to be not panic because uh, it's normal that after a big earthquake, you have uh, aftershocks. But, and I tried to be focused on why I'm, why I'm on this call. You know, I'm trying to be focused on sharing the message, you know, on, on doing the be consistent and as a like, in spite of the fear to do it, right? I know it's a bit, uh, a bit like it's not like it's an art earthquake. It's not something else. But I, I, yeah, I managed to stay focused for a while, but not, not until the end. <laughs> so, so Natalie, thank you. For that. And how was your experience on the? I know this is like unblinded is new to you, right? Like this isn't something yeah, you've, so, you've been... so new. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I follow, I follow my friends in the in the group for a while, like uh, you know, from Tony Robbins community, and uh, I'm pretty new. Yeah, my first contact was actually last night with all of you yeah yeah and how was that i know it's brand new how did it feel for you and you know what what are your it's your beautiful it's very it's 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 something really different you know uh like the energy of the group and the consciousness is totally different and i i'm not i'm i really believe i'm not pulled into it by, like by accident you know there is something more for me here uh, and one of the things that I like, one of the facts that like, like I, I live in Croatia, you know, and like many people, most of the people in the group are from the state. So what happened to me last year, I, I tap into a different, uh, like one different universe for me, you know. I, I started to really step up out of my nature and my uh, like uncomfortable, you know, uh, because I started to share my message in English, you know, I'm European, I speak Croatian. I did so many lives, you know, and really like, I think all those, as you said, resilient nature inside of me actually uh, brought me to all this situation and maybe also to this group again. So I deeply believe that every step that you take, in, in spite that you are really afraid, you know, doesn't matter earthquake or not. This was just one example. It's like you just you just do it, you know. Uh, and yeah, who knows what is there for me? <laughs> well, Natalie, thank you. I thought I was tough for swimming to the sandbar. Um, thank you for trumping that, Natalie. Yeah. And we want everybody's <laughs> women to the sandbars today. Natalie, thank you for being here. You know, please be, you know, check out what's happening here. Um, we're excited <laughs> to share what, what's going on and the, and the science that we hope looks like magic, but it's science that looks like magic and feels like magic. And I'll leave everybody with this on this Trajectory Tuesday. So Ogmandino scroll number eight that I've modified, I offer to you, I share this way, right? Today, I, I multiply my my ecosystems and every ecosystem I touches, I touch value 100 fold. Today, I multiply mm -hmm. my, my ecosystems and every ecosystem I touch value 100 fold, right? Trajectory Tuesday. Love you all. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.